your hosts have earned a reputation as fierce and effective advocates inside and outside of the courtroom. Both partners are experienced trial attorneys who have been board certified in family law by the Texas Board of Legal Specialization. Thanks for tuning into For Better, Worse, or Divorce podcast, where we provide you tips and insights on how to navigate divorce and child custody situations in the state of Texas. Um, I'm Brian Walters. I'm joined by Jake Gilbreth. And today we're going to discuss an article from the New York Post um, from just a few days ago, January 30th, about trends in the average American's decision-making processes. Um, In particular, this article found... um, research that shows uh, money mistakes or money conflicts can affect relationships and that a survey of uh, about 2,000 Americans concluded um, uh, that 40 percent of them have ended a relationship over poor financial decisions. Um, And it's no secret that money is and oftentimes is a leading cause of divorce. Uh, Money is always a sensitive topic in any relationship and it can be hard to find common ground when it comes to finances. a national surveys of family studies has said that money was the second most common subject couples fight about, the first being infidelity. So here we are to discuss our thoughts on this as Texas family law attorneys and our experience working with clients who've decided to get divorced based on financial decisions or, or are facing a decision about whether to get divorced based on these kind of financial conflicts. So um, let me ask you just generally, Jake, if you're it's if that's been sort of your observation in your practice over these years that that money's a, a big source of conflict in in the marriage. Yeah, I think it is. I mean, I think it's kind of two part. One, it's it's um, you know, marriage is a partnership. I always tell people that it's uh, there's lots of things that go into a marriage. Uh, there's a romantic aspect to it, a you know, sexual aspect to it. There's obviously raising children that aspect to it, raising a family. Uh, and then at the end of the day, it's a financial partnership, and we don't think about that a lot when going into, um, you know, any relationship and uh, going into a marriage that we're going to be making uh, partnership style uh, decisions together, a lot of times together uh, in, in a uh, in a relationship. And frankly, it's I don't find that it's talked about a lot uh, leading up into marriage. And, you know, it's really not something I think when people are uh, on their third or fourth date or whatever. It's been a while since I've dated, but uh, whether, uh, you know, over um, over dinner when they're dating, I'm sure they talk about, uh, people talk about children and whether or not you want to have kids, how do you want to see your family growing? Uh, it's usually not um, a topic, as I understand it, a topic of CNN. So, and, oh, and by the way, how do you, how much of your income do you like to save and uh, what type of uh, interest rate do you like to see on a mortgage before taking one out? So I think a lot of people go in to a relationship, even even a marriage, maybe not understanding where each other sees, uh, how the other one sees uh, finances, and that can lead to conflict. Uh, the other thing is, it's you know I think that people naturally fight over what stresses us out. Uh, there's studies out there, for example, that you know when you're raising a child with special needs, that unfortunately has a really high divorce rate because it can be really stressful. The kids are stressful enough, uh, as us parents know, but it can particularly be stressful raising a child with special needs. And things that stress us out uh, lead to conflict. And finances, for most uh, Americans, uh, whether or not you make $1,000 a month or $100,000 a month or a million dollars a month, one thing I've learned since the very beginning of practicing family law is that, that people are stressed out by finances no matter how much money they make. And when you're stressed about it, uh, you fight about it with your spouse, and that can lead. Uh, and then, if you're not on the same page, uh, then that just exasperates the situation. Yeah, one of the first trends I, I noticed as a young divorce lawyer was, um, I mean, to simplify it, I'd kind of put people into two categories: spenders and savers, right? And there were so there's three types of marriages where they're both spenders, they're both savers, or ones or you've got one of each. Um, again, to simplify, it's always a spectrum, but. Um, I, I found that the when you had one spender and one saver, uh, that was a lot of conflict because the saver wanted to save and the spender wanted to spend. When you had two spenders, that was usually a problem because there wasn't enough money to go around. And that the ones that seemed to have the fewest problems were they both liked saving money. Um, so, but there are not that many uh, marriages that probably go into that into that category. So, anyway. Um, Okay, well, here's some specific questions we'll we'll go over. Maybe we'll kind of alternate between them. But um, so, just asking you, how often do you hear about finances um, in 
consults that you have about divorces or even, you know, I guess it could even come up if it's an unmarried couple that's living together, for example. But is that something you speak about very often in those consults? Yeah, a lot when um, talking about the breakup of the marriage or the, or the conflicts that you have. I, I will say it's rare that somebody would come in and say, I'm getting divorced because we see finances differently. Or I'm getting divorced because he spends and I save and I don't like that. Uh, they, it's usually not cited as the reason for divorce, but it's talked about because it's a often a huge area of dispute that people have. Um, or it's something that they've never really discussed with their spouse or really actually had a full-blown discussion with their spouse about the differences that they see, but they carry the resentment um, or they've had, you know, a little bit of discussion on it and they don't like the way the other spouse responded and, and they carry that resistant uh, resentment. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, but for infidelity, I mean, obviously if somebody, if you ask somebody in a console, why are you getting divorced? Well, he cheated on me or she cheated on me. That's usually um, brought up. Other than that, the, why are you getting divorced? It's usually, a, a variety of things um, that, that lead to the divorce. And so while somebody may not say we're getting a divorce because we fight like cats and dogs over money, it, when you dig, it's usually um, usually a significant source of conflict, which can then lead uh, to conflict in, in the divorce because uh, they're going to see finances differently. You usually see, you usually see things that cause problems in the marriage bleed over and cause problems in the divorce. I, I was taught as a young associate um, when I worked for Jim Piper, he always would tell people, why would you expect your spouse to behave differently in a divorce than he or she behaved during the marriage? Uh, so if you fight about finances when you're married, you're going to see people fight about finances typically uh, when they're going through a divorce. Yeah. And um, something that you mentioned infidelity is, is another big reason. Um, but there's something I've heard referred to these days is financial infidelity. So you know, to me, that's typically meant um, somebody was spending money, um, not necessarily on a you know, girlfriend or boyfriend, but just spending money without telling the other side and or doing it in a you know, much larger amount than, than they expected. And when and oftentimes you either find that out and that can be a trigger for a divorce or we find it out in the, in the divorce process when we're kind of the finances get get opened up. Um, and that, that's been, I think, particularly common when one of two things is the case. Either people keep their finances separate, which doesn't actually separate your finances in Texas under community property law, but, but people do that sometimes. I, I understand that. And um, the other, the other um, one could be with just one, par one of the adults, one of the spouses just isn't interested in the finances and just kind of, you know, goes about their daily business and, you know, spends money, but doesn't worry about it. And the other spouse that controls the finances and it may just be an agreement it may not even be anything very nefarious um you know is is spending money on something that um the other spouse uh didn't know about it. and often we get in arguments well i told her or she didn't she didn't care or she never asked or i thought it was fine or whatever the the situation is or um but that's you know that can feel like you've been cheated on too um it just about money instead of um, instead of romantically. So I think that's particularly the case when you see people start approaching retirement age, um, and, and particularly if you've left it to the other spouse to be in charge of that, um, either explicitly or implicitly. Somebody's kind of it's kind of known in the relationship that either the husband or wife is the one that's kind of monitoring these things and whether or not you know we discuss goals about retirement and when we're going to retire. And then you find out uh, that, you know, as you approach that age and you sort of start being more curious about what do we have? What's it look like? When can we retire? And then you find out that somebody's um, not been a good steward of the money or spent it nefariously. Um, I've had lots of divorces where, uh, unfortunately, one spouse will be in charge of the finances and they decide that they are uh, a part-time stock trader um, and think that they know what they're doing. Uh, and um, and take very aggressive actions and uh, in the trading a lot of times you'll see it with futures uh, they'll take very uh, aggressive actions with futures thinking that they're uh, smarter than all of us and smarter than all the uh, professional traders and can lose a great deal uh, of money 
uh, and and not tell their spouse. I, I've had that really unfortunate situation where somebody's going through a divorce and you go, well, we've got a you know couple million dollars in this brokerage, this E-Trade brokerage account, so I think we're going to be doing okay. And then you get the statements and you find out that we're not doing okay because uh, two million, one spouse, whoever's in charge of it, didn't feel like two million was enough. So I'm going to go sit there and trade and double our money and whoops, it's all gone. Um, I've I've seen various levels of that. And so that's... It's, it, you know, when people kind of cede control to the other side, other side, the other spouse uh, on finances, which this, again, like you said, that may not be that may not be nefarious or anything wrong. Sometimes you see it when one spouse is being really controlling and that's not OK. But sometimes that's just the natural division of responsibilities in the part in the partnership. Um, and then when the person that's not in charge starts asking questions and stuff and they find out that things are not as either were represented to that person or, or that person believed that they were, that can cause a lot of, of conflict. Uh, first, it'll cause a lot of fear and anxiety, which can then lead to a, a bunch of conflict. Yeah, I agree. And, and one more war story and then we'll move on. But I had a case a, a few years ago that the, it was a second marriage for both of them. They both had a, older or adult kids. They had very separate finances They and they both made good money. And, it, you know, when the divorce rolled around, the wife had, you know, put away two or $3 million and they made about, actually the husband made more money. So she figured he had, you know, three or 4 million. And it turns out he had much less than that because he had put all three of his adult children through college and in grad school and supported them. And um, he thought that was totally appropriate thing to do. Um, she thought that's our community property. You didn't discuss it with me and you just did that. And now we're, you know, much, much less well off. Not only the lost money from the actual tuition and living expenses, but also the gains that would have come from saving it. And um, it was a real big issue uh, for sure. And again, it was lack of communication and lack of transparency. I think if they just talked that through and, and did some basic uh, disclosure to each other each year, that, that would have headed off that issue. Or it would have made it an issue much earlier and they could have divorced earlier and never, never uh, had a problem. But um you know, they were, again, they were both, like you said, getting closer to retirement age, and it was a little late to to be trying to fix that. So, um, okay, well, one last issue before we, we wrap this up, just your thoughts about um, how an attorney can help um, with these type of situations. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean in the divorce process, but potentially, you know, earlier on, um, way through it i get all kinds of consults that you know they're no they're not going to file for divorce right away but they want to kind of know where things might go so any thoughts that you'd have to help people before um you know before they got too far down the road with this problem right um it's just like you said because it's not always you know hey you need to get a divorce we never tell people you need to get a divorce you know unless there's a, a safety issue um uh, but otherwise, we're not divorce lawyers saying they go, well, you need to divorce this person and how, how could you be with them? Well, obviously, if, if it's time and it's appropriate to go through divorce, we're there for you. But a lot of times we're saying, well, here's a lot of times people are coming and saying, this is an issue. What can I do? Because I don't want to get divorced. And there's lots of options. Right. And, and the advice I give people, whether or not they're consulting with me uh, or there's just people that I know, it's it's really all about communication and being open a lot of people don't like talking about finances. It can be a very awkward conversation. It can be stress producing. So we like to kind of bury our heads in the sand. But the way to sort of head these issues off is to communicate, right? Because, you know, going back to your situation, Brian, they, if they had communicated and known that that was going on, there's there's more than one option, right? One option, like you said, is they, look, we just don't see it eye to eye and this isn't working out and we're going to get a divorce. That's obviously an option. That may be what's what's the right option. The other option is we're going to go to counseling. We're going to put in place, um, you know, some rules and boundaries of how we approach this in our relationship. And we're going to work through this problem. And then another option that, with that, uh, that you could combine with that or just do standalone. And you could have a post-marital agreement, which we get um, drafted all the time. I mean, good, frankly, good fences make good neighbors. And that's, that includes married uh, spouses. And so you can legally and obviously, you know, you can set up your own boundaries in your relationship, but you can also legally set up boundaries. And some people just operate better like that. It's just, we know what the rules are. This, you know, this is your money. This is my money. This is how we spend it. These are the rules. And that helps the relationship. So they don't, so you don't see 
finances destroy all the good in a relationship that that is worth salvaging again sometimes it's not right sometimes the partnership doesn't work out that's what you know we get those calls that's why people go through divorce there's nothing wrong with that and and that's sometimes the appropriate next step but if there's we can also be there to sort of help head that off right we're not just there rah rah people to go get a divorce we're there to help head off um problems in the divorce uh, problems in the marriage, so you're not going through a divorce, or if you are going through a divorce where it's not World War III, uh, and and we're you know going through the process, not fighting like cats and dogs, like we've talked about in other episodes. Some of our clients do fight like cats and dogs, and usually that's when there's a personality disorder, and we're certainly there for that. But we're also there to sort of help people avoid um, avoid those awful situations. All right. Well, that's all we have for today. If there's a topic you'd like to discuss or if you would like to speak with someone from our team, just email us at podcast at waltersgilbert.com or visit us at waltersgilbert.com. And thanks for listening. For information about the topics covered in today's episode and more, you can visit our website at waltersgilbert.com. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of For Better, Worse, or Divorce, where we post new episodes every first and third Wednesday. Do you have a topic you want discussed or a question for our hosts? Email us at podcast at waltersgilbreath.com. Thanks for listening. Until next time.